Um, I'm delighted to say Colin Boyle is with us to reflect on the new Mayo management team. Colin, we know who the Mayo management team is going to be, and not just in the short term, but they've had a long-term deal to Kevin McStay and his backroom team, which brings much-needed stability to the situation, I suspect. Um, what's what's the, the general consensus among the people who are chatting to you about it? Oh, thanks, lads. Yeah, four, a four-year deal for Kevin. It's not, not hugely surprisingly uh, that they went with four years. I think they gave the same to James um, and when he came back in for the for the second term. So, yeah, um, wasn't obviously hugely surprised when I heard the news that it was Kevin. He, he put together a really a strong backroom team. It was obviously seen as probably his last opportunity really to get this job for, for himself. So he threw everything at it, uh, rounded out some some very good people and uh, obviously came up against stiff opposition. Um, so look, at an awful lot of talk over the last couple of weeks as this has been building up in, in May of who was going to get it. And, you know, there was different, you know, rumours going around. But obviously as things were developing on Monday, it looked like it was Kevin and obviously it was confirmed on, on Monday night. He... As you say, put together a really strong backroom team. But before we get into the, the nitty gritty of, of that team and what they're actually going to be capable of, you'd have to say that the quality of teams put together was actually sensational. And any county in Ireland would be delighted to have such great, like three different separate teams who all brought something very different to the table. Like there's been a lot of criticism of the, oh, look at this process. I can't believe it's taken so long. But ultimately, any of those three teams, if they were in charge of an intercounty team, you'd be like, well, I've got to take this one seriously. I've got to respect this group. Absolutely, yeah. There was serious quality, uh, as you mentioned. I think that's one thing about the split season, especially when, when Mayo wear out relatively early in it at, at a quarter-final stage, is that you don't have to rush into... into it's not like you've only a couple of weeks to get this done or a month or, or whatever. You know, you can take a bit of time in it. Probably would have been a bit longer than what a lot of people would have liked, but look at it's done now. It took well, it took three months. They they would have feel the county board, I'm sure, feel like they've done the right thing. They've gone through the right process. They've they've done the interviews. I'm not sure when's the last time four people interviewed for a Mayo job, if ever. Um, it, they probably did a, a few years ago. But yeah, four really strong candidates. And uh, look, I think the county board would probably feel like they've they've got the the right man for the job. And that number of candidates speaks to how attractive this job very much still is. Is that surprising at all to you, Colm, that the people are still very much unbelievably interested in this job? Like It says to me that this team hasn't come off their peak just yet at all, that they're still very much right there and there's a capability to, to win an All-Ireland next year with this team. 100% on. I, I don't think Kevin McSay would be, would be taking this job at, at this stage of his of his life and his career if he didn't believe there was a chance there to win the All-Ireland or that Mayo could win the All-Ireland. And I'd say the same for Stephen Roch for coming back in there with them and, and Donny Buckley as well and obviously Lee McHale. You know, them boys, I think, have a firm belief um, that there's a there's a panel there, a squad there with the, the capabilities of, of doing something. And they're all they're also probably looking at the landscape of what's out there at the minute. And obviously Kerry being an Ireland champions, um, obviously a really, really good team. But you know, outside of that, there's an awful lot of teams around around the same level. And I think Mayo are one of them. And even if you if you look if you're looking at the likes of Galway last year, coming from the middle of the pack and being within five minutes of winning the All Ireland, you know, I I think Mayo will be right in the mix next year, along with the number of teams um that would be pushing for the for the last stages of all Ireland. And I think the lads there will be, will feel if they get, you know, a lot of things right. Obviously there's a lot of things that need to work on and need to improve on. But if they if they get an awful lot of things right that they're going to be there or thereabouts. Colin, how, how important was Stephen Rochford's decision to throw his lot in with this group in terms of winning over the male public and also I guess in, I mean we don't know the ins and outs of the selection committee, what their decision process was, but because he seems like a, a well got character. People have uh, a lot of time for what he'd done at club level and then at inter-county level. I think, you know, it's, it's possible that his team was the closest to winning in All-Ireland. And for him not, not to go on his own, but to actually say, right, I'm going to be part of this group, that seems to have added a lot of heft to their candidacy. Yeah, I think it was a great move by Kevin, to be honest, um, to, to to pick up the phone and get Stephen Rochford on board and obviously go in and, and, and get Tony Buckley as well. I think, you know, Kevin or both them fellas had the huge time for, for Mayo football and what they've done for them in the past. Um, obviously, there will be a few lads there that have still worked for them that will a great time for them as well. So I think that's a very positive move by by Kevin to get them two boys in there. And they have the you know great experience as well. Um and they were even even with that they will add a bit of freshness and, and new ideas and, and going forward. 
you know, will be interesting to see, you know, the last couple of years with Mayo, we've kind of gone down the route of running an awful lot of ball and going through the hands. Um, it'll be very interesting to see with Kevin now and 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 Noah and Stephen and Donny. They like to move the ball really, really quickly and through the foot as much as possible. So I think you could see a, a different style in Mayo's play certainly next year um, and over the next couple of years of maybe moving the ball a small bit quicker and certainly by foot. That that's interesting because um, like you obviously would have played under Rochford as well. And was there a significant mm-hmm. difference between how? Rochford would have approached things versus, say, James? Yeah, well, I've mentioned this before. I think Stephen, Stephen was very big on moving the ball as quickly as possible by foot. Um, I think James, over the last couple of years, especially when Dublin were kind of in their pomp when he came in in 19, he kind of, and especially when they bet us in the semi-final, he nearly, I think, made the decision that he needs to get more athletes in the team, more runners into the team to be able to compete with them for 70, 80 minutes. And, and that's kind of what you saw happening over the next couple of years with Mayo and, and our style of play kind of, kind of was built around that. I think obviously we still have uh, will have them powerful runners, absolutely. But I think you will, what you'll see with that is us moving the ball a small bit quicker. I think it'd be interesting to see with Kevin because obviously through the media work over the last couple of years, and I, I know from doing a, a few podcasts with him for the Mayo News last year, he's a, he's a really big fan of Aidan O'Shea at full forward and developing the game plan around that. And I know people have said that's been, been done in the past, but he's been very adamant about that um, over the last couple of years. So I think that's going to be a really interesting uh, thing to look out for to see does he try and actually develop a, a game plan around Aidan at full forward and use him as a kind of focal point of the attack. Is it possible that that extends Aidan O'Shea's career significantly for a couple of years even? Like, you know, I, I don't know what, you'd know much better about the wear and tear and the, the actual whether or not running that distance matters in terms of your ability to keep going. But just instinctively, it would seem like you might be able to have a couple of years extra at the end of your career if you were to move inside. Oh, hugely, yeah. And it's look, it's almost a natural progression for a big man, for, for Aidan, and, and especially around the skill set that he has. But yeah, it, it definitely would. And especially, look at around, especially the athletes that's out there now around the middle of the pitch. You know, you're trying to get, avoid getting paired off with them as much as possible as you're moving on in age and certainly when you're, you're a man the size of Aidan's size. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's something that definitely can be worked on and something we can definitely get better at, as a, not just as Aiden in there, but as a full group of how we use them. If it turns out that, that that's what they decide to do or look, it might be certain case that, or case that they do it in certain games or, or whatnot, but it's definitely something that I think, I feel it'll be interesting to see does Kevin try and, and deploy. What will Donny Buckley bring to bear as a coach? What, what are his skill sets and strengths? He'll bring loads of energy anyway. Um, he's very, obviously, very active. He's he's very good and he, he's defending and he's he's tackling. He's big into the one-on-one tackling and and groove tackling um, as well and getting your technique right and 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 trying to force turnovers, which we were which we were good at over the years and for and getting counterattacks, quick counterattacks from that. And like I said, moving the ball really really quickly by by foot then if you can from that. So like Donny will add to that hugely. I think. I think what everyone is kind of wondering in Mayo, his, Kevin and McStay has got three really strong coaches there and Stephen Rochford, Tony Buckley and, and Lee McHale, um, three boys that I'd say would like to be really, really hands-on. So I think it's going to be really interesting to see, you know, if we ever know what who's doing what or what role each has taken in, in training sessions or is one of four, more forwards coach or a backs coach or, 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 how, or how they're lining up. But that's going to be really, really interesting um, to see going forward. What, what was the Rochford... Uh, Buckley dynamic like when you played under the two of them? Yeah, they're they're smart fellas. Uh, you know what they do. What I did like about them, really, really, I liked a lot of things about them. But they're they're willing to try different things. So like over the years, you know, there was a couple of games where they like played the likes of Lee Keegan midfield against Roscommon. I remember in, in, in a quarter final in thir- in seventeen. And he, he kicked one three from midfield to put him on a man marking job and into Smith and you know different things like even Aidan O'Shea famously playing full back against Kieran Donnelly. You know they played Kieran uh, Kevin McLaughlin very successfully as a sweeper in sixteen. Like they will try different things and have different ideas um, and even based around you know the opposition that we're playing, they will change things up and based on, on on what teams are playing on any given week. Um, so yeah, they'll bring huge, huge ideas in that regard and definitely won't be afraid, afraid to try um, different things, there's no doubt about it. And what's the word then on next day and Mikhail's approach to the game? Obviously, you've mentioned the, um, Mc, uh, next day saying that he'd be a fan of Aiden no O'Shea potentially in at 14, but with the two of them together in terms of like their tactical approach, maybe maybe at club level and, and obviously with the Rossies, what have you seen and how will that mix or, or how will it not mix potentially with, with the likes of what Rochford wants to bring to the table? 
I think it'll mix fairly well. I, w- I would say they would have a lot of similar uh, philosophies of how they want to play. And now, you know, now they're with a team like Mayo, they might have the players or more of the players that, they, that they'd like to play a really attacking style of game. I, I think that would be Kevin's uh, natural instinct. But obviously, you know, you need to get it right at the back first. You saw it with Kerry, obviously, this year. You know, they're the best example you can use with getting things right at the back and building your platform from there and in the likes of Ty Morley at, at centre back. So there's a number of things I think Kevin will be looking to nail down straight away, obviously getting on to the couple of the older boys, making sure they're nailed down um, and ready to go for next year. And, and if they are, like we've already mentioned, Aiden there, the likes of a Lee, you know, I think going forward, it be interesting to see how they use him. If he is back there next year, you know, at this stage of his career, does he need to be doing man marking jobs? And if from a cornerback position, I, I'd love to see him up the field now and maybe playing a, playing from a half forward position. Uh, similar role, maybe to watch Johnny Heaney play for Galway this year, where he's getting back, helping his half back line when, when you're defending, but when you're attacking, then he's more, playing more of a free role and just getting forward and, and helping out the attack as much as possible. I, I think that'd be that'd be interesting to see how they use the likes of him amongst others. But look, you'd be hoping from a Mayo point of view that they'd be able to build a bigger squad. I think Kevin has already mentioned this in an interview he's done with the structure, what, what's coming next year. The, the three extra games, if you get to a quarterfinal, just to get to a quarterfinal, you're going to need that squad. And, you know, I suppose it's good time. And now Mayo Club Championship is starting, not this weekend, but the following weekend. So I think them boys will be out out and about and really trying to get boys in over the winter months to try and develop them on for the National League to get a proper look at them for next year. This is next day's third bite of the cherry in terms mm. of trying to get the manager's job. He's been successful this time. Does that speak to maybe a, a wider change in Mayo GEA that, first of all, he's been happy enough to give it another crack to go back for the manager's job and second of all, that he's actually been successful and he's got the gig? Yeah, and like I said, I don't think he'd be... He'd be going at this now if at, at this stage for him if he didn't think there was a real chance of doing something with Mayo so yeah look at it, I think that maybe it was just now it was the perfect opportunity for him um, and it, it just might all come together nicely uh, obviously he probably would he's waited for this a lot longer than he would have wished for him I'm sure but look at now now he's there now the opportunity is there for him I'm sure he's going to do absolutely everything he can to, to try and progress uh, Mayo football and be, and be as competitive as he can over the next three or four years It kind of felt like the, the last um, period had come to its natural conclusion and felt a little bit like even the Mayo supporters, which we thought had this kind of endless ability to keep bouncing back from setbacks, had become a little bit exhausted by that whole process. Uh, is this the re-energising of the fan base as much as anything as well? That like, you know, you, you bring this kind of legendary, magnificent seven style band back together and um, and everybody's up for it and, and delighted that this has happened is that the, from the outside that would seem to be the atmosphere yeah I think I think you're right John do you know because we've been out of the championship so long like it feels like it's like it feels like six months ago since Mayo played in the championship honestly and to get this bit of news now as a Mayo supporter there is a bit of excitement definitely back in the county again and I think everyone's going to be looking forward now as I, I've already mentioned to the club championship starting really kicking off to seeing right who's in form and who could maybe add something to this Mayo uh, team next year or this Mayo squad next year. So I think definitely, yeah, there's a bit of a buzz and when things kick off next year, I think you'll, you'll see the crowds back again, you know, flocking to the league games and looking to see how, how Mayo are progressing or, or what changes will be made um, from, from a management point of view and from a style of play, I suppose, and uh, looking to develop things on them for the championship. Are there many other people who might be capable of playing inter-county football who haven't been in that squad over the last couple of years or uh, is it actually good luck, better luck with injuries and improving the current stock? Is that is that the most likely outcome or do you think there are some new faces who will come through and not just the younger players that maybe who have been overlooked for whatever reason in previous regimes? Yeah, there, there probably will be a few. Obviously, you mentioned injuries there. That's that's the key thing for Mayo is getting these boys right. Like as far as I know, Tommy Conroy and Ryan O'Donoghue you know, um, haven't lined up with their clubs yet this year. So obviously, they're taking their time with the injuries, and I think that's the right thing to do at, at their at their stage of the careers. Just get these these major injuries that they have right, and and get fresh for for next year, or maybe play a bit of club football towards the end of the year. Um, and then there's a couple of other lads like I've mentioned David McBreen before. He's a he's a he's a full back with huge potential, but he's had he's had really, really bad luck with injuries. He's he's probably 22, uh, 23 years of age. He's a monster of a man. And if he, if we can just get him back, I think he'd be a huge addition to to the Mayo full back line next year. And like I said, he would free up the likes of a Lee to get out of there and play a more freer role up the pitch, definitely, if that's something they wanted to do. 
than the of the likes of maybe Mark Moore, who you know burst onto the scene a couple of years ago, and he's been really really unlucky with injuries as well. Um, as far as I know, he's back playing with the club now as well. So the likes of him as well, Fergal Bolan has been a, a really kind of brilliant player for club player for me over the years. Kind of unlucky not to get more game time for Mayo. Over the last couple of years, so look at he'd be he'd be looking to push on as well. But there's loads of boys in the same boat and lads outside the squad now looking to, to push in. I'm sure this is your opportunity now if you want to make impression. If you're 20, 21, 22 years of age, these boys coming in for the next couple of years, now is your time with club championship coming up to, to make an impression on them. It does sound like your instinct is that those older players we've spoken about will come back just out of curiosity to see what might happen and also because maybe they'll be managed in a way that gets the, the best out of them. Yeah, well, I'm I'm in hope as much as anything else. Um, obviously, there's a few more boys as well, like Kevin McLaughlin and Jason Doherty, and I'm not sure obviously what them boys are doing. But uh, look at you, as Mayo supporters, you'd be hoping that the the likes of Lee and Aiden, you know, would would certainly back um and, and give it another go. And this might be exactly what they just need, you know, a new management team coming in, and obviously guys there that they've worked with before that they know and trust and. As you said, lads that will look after them in certain aspects and, you know, maybe give them, maybe free them up a small bit more from their roles that they might have been doing the last couple of years. And it just might give them a bit, a bit of a kick on to, to get, a, you know, really big performances out of them in 2023. Like I'm hearing Mayo for Sam here, Colin. I mean, this is, this is a lot of excitement. <laughs> don't, don't, trust yeah. don't trust him. No, no, no. We won't go to that extent just yet, Owen. But uh, no, look at you just never know. You never know. I, I do think we'll be contender next year. Um, and even look at, I'd say the lads looking at Galway gets to get into the final this year. That might give them a bit of an impetus now to kick on and and go really go for it, go for it next year. Um, so yeah, you never know. You never know. You see the style of play question that you're you're talking about there. The mm. the athletes that James had, like, um, it's incredible to watch when it's working really well. And I guess maybe other teams have worked away, or found a way to stop it being completely effective. Um particularly by blocking up the, the channel to the goals. Yes. So what you want is them to be able to do that at certain times during the game, but then also to have in their locker the ability to you know, kick long balls in. And if that's to win marks or if that's for um, someone to feed off the big man inside. So it's just about being uh, changeable and unpredictable for the opposition, is it? 100%. And even getting our scores a small bit more freely. Um, like often when you watch us, our scores tend to be very hard work or they tend to be scores from out around the 45 or it's half backs or midfielders or half forwards kicking kicking long range scores you know we, for me we don't get enough scores where we're getting boys on the loop or we're getting boys on, on backdoor cuts or you know the scores that seem to come so easily to the likes of a, a, a Kerry or a Dublin you know I think there's way more we can do in that regards in our, in our forwards movement and getting our best shooters on the ball in, in the right positions I think there's loads of different aspects we can improve on and, and then you know we are always going to have the athletes on top of that and our, our strike runners come from deep. I think that's a huge part of our game and it's something that we, we have a huge, um, that teams fear when they play Mayo. But like I said, we need more than that. Definitely if you're going to push on, if you're if you're going to be trying when they're Ireland. Yeah. All right, Colin, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Thanks a million, lads.